Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and today, 8.2 hit PTR servers, which means we're now able to take a look at the new Heart of Azeroth system. This time, we're going to be taking a look at two specific spec essences. Before we get too far into that, if you're interested in any of the weak ORAs or add-ons you see here, I will have a link to the description to my Twitch where you can find them all. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Now the Heart of Azeroth system functions very similarly to how the old Glyph system used to work. Once you acquire an essence, you're then able to add and remove it basically at will. There are multiple essences that can be acquired, most of which offer a generic stat or damage based proc that slot into either a major or minor slot. As you can see when I hover over them here however, each bring both a major and minor effect with it. Whichever essence you choose as your major will bring with it both the major and minor abilities for as long as you have it equipped. Your minor essence of choosing, however, will only bring with it the corresponding minor effect. As mentioned, today we're going to be looking at two spec-specific essences that we currently have available for Warlocks and how they're changing both the spec and rotation as a whole. The Vision of Perfection is the major essence we'll be looking at, which brings with it both a small chance to proc a Dark Lair, Infernal, or Demonic Tyrant randomly, based on your current spec, as well as reducing their cooldown by 16.5%. One thing that is not listed here, however, is that whenever you actually do proc an additional Tyrant, Infernal, or, or um, Dark Lair, it further reduces the time your player controlled Dark Lair, Infernal, or Tyrant is on cooldown by what appears to be about 10 seconds per proc. This does have some pretty interesting implications, both on certain Azerite traits as well as talents and CDs overall. The Memory of Lucid Dreams Essence is going to be our minor glyph of choice and brings with it an ability that alters your shard based spells. They now have a chance to refund 50% of the shards spent on them, in addition to healing you for a small amount. Unfortunately, however, this effect does not seem to be functioning correctly for destruction or affliction on PTR right now, but is most certainly working for demonology as you will see later on. If you're looking for a full list of available essences, I will place a link in the video description for you. Affliction is the first spec that I want to talk about running this essence combination, as it is, in a sense, the least impressive. Procking an additional Dark Lair outside of your main Dark Lair window just really does not do a whole lot for the spec, especially for playing an Absolute Corruption build. The effect summons a Dark Lair that will blast the target with I-Beam in the same sense that your main Dark Lair does, but this one only extends your dots by 2 seconds and not the full 8 that your normal Dark Lair does. Outside of the opener, the fact that we will most likely only have 1, maybe 2 Unstable Afflictions rolling at this point in time means this effect is honestly pretty underwhelming. If you're lucky enough to get an actual proc in the opener, then it will certainly be significant, but I was sadly not able to do so through a lot of testing. One interaction, however, that I stumbled upon is the 2 minute 30 second baseline cooldown on Dark Lair with one Dreadful Calling Azerite trait. In the early stages of BFA Alpha and into Beta, Dreadful Calling actually reduced your Dark Lair's cooldown by 3 seconds per UA cast, but was sadly nerfed to 1 second and has been a subpar trait basically since then. Running one Dreadful Calling trait with Vision of Perfection, however, at least in my testing, brings your Dark Lair cooldown to around the 2 minute mark, give or take 10 seconds. If you proc one or more Dark Lairs while it's on cooldown, it further reduces your main Dark Lair CD, thus lining up with basically every Dark Soul Misery you have available. There were times that I did have to hold my actual DSM for about 8-10 to 10 seconds, but that's much better than holding it for a minute which is something that we really don't do outside of it being our final Dark Lair cast. While I do certainly feel that Affliction drew the short end of the stick with this trait, you simply cannot deny the actual synergy between it, Dreadful Calling, and Dark Soul Misery. As mentioned, the Memory of Lucid Dreams Essence does not appear to be functioning currently for Affliction on PTR as of yet, but it will lead to an even shorter Dark Lair cooldown which is even stronger. Destruction, on the other hand, I feel benefits a good bit more from the trait than its dot based counterpart. The Essence still does summon an Infernal for 50% of its duration, which is a whopping 15 seconds. Currently on PTR, they seem to be dying almost right when they land, but it's a bug that will hopefully be resolved soon. The two big questions I had going into Destruction with Vision of Perfection was 1. Does it extend Grimoire Supremacy's window? And 2. How does it interact with Crashing Chaos? Well, there's both some good news and actual bad news. The good news is that it does indeed reset the 8 stacks of Crashing Chaos that you get whenever an Infernal is summoned. This can lead to some pretty insane Crashing Chaos chains. I've seen multiple Infernals proc basically back to back, which both reset my Crashing Chaos stacks to 8. 
The bad news, however, is that it also resets our Grimoire Supremacy stacks. This trait is obviously powerful, but I have also been about 18 to 20 seconds deep into my main player cast Infernal Window, sitting at a decent Supremacy stack just to have the Vision proc and reset the actual stack. Subsequent Vision procs also reset earlier Vision procs when it comes to Supremacy as well, so it really puts us in a weird spot as Destruction. Having Crashing Chaos for a much higher duration of the fight is really strong, but having the potential to lose so much value in Grimoire Supremacy makes me a bit hesitant of the essence in a sense. The fact that Supremacy is such a strong single target talent as well when compared to both Roaring Blaze and Grimoire Sacrifice makes it even more awkward as a whole. There are certainly other major essences available that are also based around main and secondary stat procs, so they will warrant some testing as well. In the end, barring changes to how it affects Supremacy, I think it's going to really come down to if it's actually worth taking a risk in having our later Supremacy window reset or not. You also have to weigh in extra Supremacy windows we will get from the additional Infernal procs, so in the end it's most likely not as big of a loss as it initially seems, but certainly warrants more testing over the next few weeks of PTR. Finally we have Demonology. I made sure to save Demo for last as it is certainly the most broken of the three specs currently on PTR. Unlike Destruction and Affliction, the Memory of Lucid Dream's Minor Essence is indeed active for Demo, which I am sure only helps to feel even more broken than it already is while also helping fuel random demonic consumption based tyrant procs. If you notice here, however, I am not wearing any explosive potential pieces and that is due to the Supreme Commander Azerite trait. You do indeed get a full 15 second Supreme Commander buff, which amounts to about 1100 intellect per trait at 420, every time you proc a demonic tyrant. Over the course of multiple 3 minute sims, I was sitting right around 30-35% to 35 uptime on said buff, which at 3 stacks amounts to about 3300 intellect, or the equivalent of about 13 intellect flasks stat wise. Sure, there's a decent bit of RNG tied into the procs, but the 5 shards you are given in addition to running soul conduit and memory of lucid dreams makes it so that it seems like you rarely even have to cast shadow bolt. There are also times where you proc a tyrant about 15 or so seconds before your player bound tyrants off CD, which leads to you having a full supreme commander in like buff for its entire duration. Throw in a balefire branch, in pot, and some procs and you too could have your own 342,000 creating tyrant. While I did experiment with explosive potential a bit here, I feel that the huge buff Supreme Commander brings with it is actually stronger, especially taking random tyrant procs into account. There have been times where I've been able to have three tyrants active at once, and there have been times where it seems I have had evenly placed tyrants for about a minute or so. There have also been times where I've gone over two minutes without a proc at all, so RNG is RNG. As mentioned, the Memory of Lucid Dream's Minor Essence also is functioning correctly for Demonology, so this makes the spec feel even more fluent. There were times where I went over 30 seconds without casting a single Shadow Bolt due to Lucid Dream's refunds paired with Soul Conduit and Mnemonic Meteor. Throw in a Tyrant Brock or two which feeds us 5 of 10 shards some Baleful Invocation and it really does feel amazing. Hopefully the Lucid Dream's Essence will be functioning in the next PTR build for Affliction and Destruction so we can really get a feel for how each spec actually plays because at this point, Demonology is so far ahead it's not even funny. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this gave you all a better understanding and first hand look at how the new Heart of Azeroth system looks for Warlocks in 8.2. I'm extremely excited to see how 8.2 PTR progresses and what changes, if any, they bring to the Heart system and Warlocks as a whole. While they did say that there would not be any massive class changes or overhauls in 8.2, I'm still hoping for Demonology to be given some kind of interrupt. The issues with Drain Soul, Nightfall, and Sow the Seeds I hope are also addressed for Affliction, as it would be nice to have different choices when it comes to Mythic Plus and different raid encounters overall. I will admit that Demonology certainly looks to be the strongest when taking the Heart of Azeroth into account, but I would honestly be a bit surprised if Demon makes it to the later stages of PTR like this. Either way, I'm really excited about the new Heart of Azeroth system, and I think it will be a pretty big success heading into Nashatar and beyond. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you want to see more WoW content and help support the channel, smash those like, share, and subscribe buttons as your support really helps. Thanks so much guys and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.